uh, to Framing 101. This is a six-part mini-series that we're having. You can check us out like you are right now on Facebook. Um, like, share, make sure you comment. But uh, this is Sam Bowie. He's a professional custom framer. He's got over 20 years experience and he's basically taking a step-by-step -step everything that you need to know about how to accomplish your own framing projects at home. So if you've missed our earlier episodes, we already talked about um, different frame styles, how to pick the right frame for your piece of artwork. Um, he showed us how to fit canvas to a frame, how to wire a frame for hanging. We talked about um, glass selection and how to um, fit glass into your frame with spacers. So Sam, if you'd like to take over and show us sure. a little bit about mat cutting. All right, well, first thing we're gonna do here is I'm gonna do a demo with our Logan Mat Cutter, um, which we, I think we rent these now, is that correct? That's correct. We rent these, so you can rent one and do this at home yourself. Um, this is a 16 by 20 pre-cut blank mat. Uh, all the stores sell these on the floor, so they're standard sizes that fit all the frames that we have, except for the bigger sizes. Um, and then they can cut a mat opening at the frame counter for you. So you, if you bring in art, this is for if your art doesn't fit into a ready-made frame and you don't want to spend the money getting the custom framing done, we can mat your art out to a ready-made size. So you can save a lot of money on the frame. You'll be paying for a custom mat cut, maybe custom glass if you if you want to get a nicer grade that maybe is in the frame um, or if you need it at all. And um, and they can cut an opening out of the mat for you. I think it's like twelve fifty to do that. So you buy a scrap mat, I think something like this is less than four bucks. So for 16 bucks or so, you can get a, a mat cut to fit me your frame and a custom size. We have this piece right here. This is a 12 by 16 piece. So as I demonstrated on the last episode, it could go directly into a frame. But say you wanted to add a little accent and maybe put a nice little mat around it and give it a little more volume. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mat this out, pretend like it's not a standard size. I'm gonna mat it out to fit into a 16 by 20 frame. And I'm gonna show you how to use the Logan mat cutter. So this is my mat that I'm gonna use this is the cutting head for one of our Logans. The blade is noticed right here. It comes down, it gives you that bevel when you cut it. So it'll give you a beveled mat, and you'll see that in just a few minutes. Um, Logan has all these guides on here. The most important guide is this one right here. That is where you set your mat against, and that creates the width of your margin when you cut it. I've already got this set at two and a quarter, so I know that it'll come over just a little bit. The opening I make on the 16 by 20 mat will come up over just a little bit on our piece right there, um, but not cover <laughs> anything up. And for all you artists out there, I recommend a signature kind of about that far in on your substrate. If it's right at the edge, you're A, gonna lose it when you mat it, or B, lose it under the edge of the frame when you put it in the frame. So make sure you sign it a little closer in so that you have enough room to mat it or put it in the frame without anything covering up the signature. I've seen that happen in the past and gave a pencil to the artist that re-signed it. So yeah, it was signed somewhere closer. But anyway, I will show you how to use one of these Logan mat cutters. And forgive me, it's been a long time since I've had to do it this way. We have what's called a wizard CNC machine that we use now where all I do is type in some numbers, hit enter, and it'll cut it itself. And it's a really cool machine. And we'll demonstrate that in a minute. Um, you guys are welcome to wait at the other side of the counter and look back in the frame shop and see how it works. But this is, this is the old way. This is the way I learned how to do it many years ago. So what I got right here is I got this set at two and a quarter. I'm going to create my margins, but i got to know where they are when I get ready to cut. So, basic pencil. And as Sam does this, I want to let you all know, in case you didn't know already, we're actually going to be rolling out demos like these to all of our Jerry's Artorama stores. So no matter where you are, as long as you're close to one of us, um, our framer in that location can show you how to do this, and you can also uh, get hands-on with it and try it yourself. Yep. All right, and the reason why I'm doing this is so that I know where the cuts are. So that's the opening I'm going to cut out. Each of these intersecting lines, I know where to stop and uh, start and stop my cut. Now, Logan is really good to help you out. Katie, if you can see this, these little hash marks. So that's, that's kind of your guide. The middle one would be lined up right here. I always tend to go about two ticks to the past for a cut to start and then two ticks past for a cut to end. If you don't do that and you come short on the cut, you're gonna have to use a razor blade to get it to, to pop out the opening or the middle piece. If you pull it out, you're gonna tear it and then you'll have like little tear marks. Overcuts are okay as long as they're minimal. Um, and that's something that's kind of avoidable, unavoidable. Doing it the old way. Sounds like practice makes perfect. 
breakfast mix perfect. It does, and I'm gonna make this look a little easier than it actually is. So just to let you guys know, um, you're gonna get home. I would, if you're gonna rent one of our mat cutters, I would get some cheapo mat board to practice with before you go and do your your final mat because you're more than likely gonna overcut or slip or something like that. You gotta be really careful with it. Uh, and this is a great mat cutter. It's not the best of these um, handheld mat cutters, but it works. Uh, if you put it against this rail right here, you have stability because you always pull the cut like this. And what I'm gonna do is just start the cut right here. So you've got my little hash marks. So that's a hash mark right there. I'm gonna come a little bit past it to start my cut. So I'm starting my cut, I'm in the board, and it is really hard to pull and then just come barely past. And you want to do it, try to do it. I just keep going over like, whoops. <laughs> and you want to try to do it in a fluid motion. If you stop and start and stop and start, you're going to see these little ridges on your bevel. They're not really noticeable, but you might see them. And they can always be uh, shaved down with uh, emery board, which is sandpaper, basically. A fine grit sandpaper is good for cleaning up um, those little edges. Hopefully, I won't have too many of them. So I always do the two long sides first and then do my short sides. So Did dumb question, you're yet? setting it in place and then pushing the blade down, correct? And I'm like, yes. All right. That might not look too good when it's done, but we'll see. Now, as you guys can imagine, it's not too difficult to do a rectangle. But if you're doing multiple openings the old fashioned way, you would have to do all the cuts for one bevel direction at one time, flip it, do them all for another bevel direction, flip it and do it that way. If you try to do them all at once, you're gonna end up with a bevel going the wrong way. <laughs> so it's really difficult. That's why I'm glad we got a wizard machine now. We just program those openings and it'll do it for us. And we'll show you guys that in a little bit. Yeah, that's a really neat neat thing. And uh, But this is the way I learned. This is the way they did it many years ago. And um, it, uh, it can be still be done and for people that aren't doing mass quantities these things are great you can rent one take it home cut all your mats bring it back and you're done oops see that's why i usually push it against there because you really have to drag this thing hard to get it to go through all right hopefully i got it to work i got one more side to do so those two those is coming out nicely got one more side to do so then he sticks it under. Right here where it says set scale is how you get the width of the your width of your margins, yeah. Now you might have varying margins, which you might run into matting something out to a ready-made frame if you have a non-standard size piece of art and you go into a standard size frame. There is the chance you can have wide margins versus narrow margins just to fit it in there. Now if it's a margin if the width is on the top and the bottom, what I would do is weight the bottom. So I, I would have my sides and my top the same width, and if I had that leeway with the thick and thick versus thin and thin, I'd weight the bottom. So I'd move the opening up there and have a thicker bottom. The reason why some people weight the bottom is because most art hangs about 59 inches off of the wall from the center point. And if the mats are even all around and the short person walks up and is looking up at it, that bottom margin is going to look narrow. So they weigh it out to even it up for short people basically is where it started from but um it's a perception thing and it's also an aesthetic it looks good on some pieces we'll do my final cut here and notice sam waits until it's completely lined up before he pushes this lever just so you don't get any of the stutter marks in the air from where you're hesitating and try to get the blade lined up and there's a map Oops. it's okay if you ding the corners they get hidden under the the edge. And that's not too bad. Katie, if you want to look at that corner, because that's probably the best you'll ever get doing a uh, hand cut, because there's no overcut on that corner. And it's, that's a tricky thing, and you will overcut. When you first try this, you'll probably have a half inch overcut, and if you don't slip and go all the way to the end and cut off one whole edge. But basically, so that's how that would fit in there. And there's a huge difference between using a mat cutter versus trying to go at it with a exacto knife. Exactly about to ask right, that. Exactly, yeah. Exacto knife. Did you see this bevel here? You're getting mm -hmm. some of the um, the white core, the white core of the, the mat. Yeah. Mat. Mm -hmm. And actually, so that another aesthetic that you've done that I've seen done in the past is uh, they'll color the bevel. Mm -hmm. They'll take it, and when 
I don't know how they do it without getting bleed over onto the face. They probably mask it off. Um, if you do that and you use a masking tape, you're gonna have to lightly put it down because this is paper. That colored part is paper and it'll peel right up. Um, but coloring the bevel is another aesthetic. And that's simply the way that would go on and that would fit inside that 16 by 20 frame. You saw, you saw me fit one in earlier or without the, uh, without the mat. The mat actually adds, uh, acts as a spacer. So you don't need to have the spacers when you have a mat because that keeps the glass off of the yard. And you can do double mats, which we're gonna show here in just a second. Um, I guess we're ready to do that now, aren't we? Yes, we are. First, do we have any questions from our audience? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. All right, we'll meet you all back at the Wizard in the Back, and Sam's going to show us how much easier our custom <laughs> framing department can do these mat cuts for us. Yep. All right, you ready? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, Heather, we're all set. So we're cutting the bottom mat right now. What's the dial on? 10, 11. Okay. It's a, it's a little quicker than what I did with the uh, with the Logan. <laughs> a little bit quicker than what I did with the Logan mat cutter, as you can see. And that was the top mat or the bottom mat. We're gonna cut the top mat now, so this is our top color. You see, just super clean edges. And again, at any Jerry's, we can do this for you for just twelve fifty plus the cost of the mat. Yep. Like you said, these are mat scraps, so yep. giving you all the secrets today. Ready? Ready. This is our top mat we're cutting right now. That was it. And what the mat cutter did for us, and uh, if I was to do a double mat with a Logan, I would have to cut the top mat first because it has a narrow or wider opening. I hear the uh, bottom mat to it, use the same margin guides, and then cut the inner mat, but I would have to come in a little bit and make the bottom mat uh, work right. And the way these guys are going to work is you got to line them up. And sometimes you'll see a little overlap on the edges, but that's okay. It'll be hidden under the rabbit. But you basically double stick those guys together and you got a double mat. So thank you all again for um, sticking with us. Stay tuned. On our next episode, we're going to talk about the archival properties of framing and um, getting into fitting, how we put it all together, and then also hanging, because what's the use of a great frame and great art if you don't know how to put it on your wall? Yep. So like, share, comment, and um, also check out a Jerry's Autorama near you because your local framers are going to be hosting demos just like Sam is today. So mm -hmm. thanks for your time. Thank, thank you, Heather, our guest framer, and we'll see you all in the next episode. <laughs>